So this is the mic that's the lowest to the ground, so I get it. <laughs> I'm vertically challenged. Right? Although we know that's how you like to record. You sit on the floor. I do, yes. Uh, how would that work out for a go skate? Just recording as you go skate? Because I'm just as flexible as him. <laughs> I just record with that back bend just through my legs the whole time. It was fantastic. <laughs> Like, why did she even bring up that horrible thing? <laughs> yeah, man, how dare That's okay! Um, it doesn't, I just like, disclaimer, if you don't have a valentine, we love you, you are loved. Just, like, please love yourself, take time to appreciate yourself. It's something that I have been working on for my entire existence. <laughs> and it is very important. Also, I have candy for you. Uh, yeah. you have to answer a question. Or ask a question. And answer it too. Uh, yeah. Tell us the answers. <laughs> yeah, tell us all the answers. We don't know. Which is actually true. We know nothing. Yeah. Erica knows everything. What? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And she also has the best ribbon. Erica Mendes with the best ribbon. Never mind, okay. So, um, I, this is a Sword Art Online panel, is that? We're not going to talk about Sword Art very much. No, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about, but then back to Sword Art. So we'll figure out a way to tie everything back to Sword Art Online. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I know. Ooh. So, starting with Candy, Shermie said she's going to Starburst stream me if I say anything wrong. Wait, Because um, she literally has Starburst. Um, yes, please. Okay. She's going to Starburst stream? I feel like yes. What does that mean? Throw a constant stream of Starburst at me. Not feel how that okay. or, or, the, or the move Kitty Toe uses in Sword Art Online when he told me. What? Um, she literally has Starburst. Sorry, okay. there's a lot of that that's okay. coming your way. So, so, so here's the deal. I'll be 100% honest with you guys. I have yet to watch Sword Art Online. I, so no spoilers. <laughs> Together, I, I said, who's on the Sword Art panel with me? And our agent said, oh no, Bryce and Jeremy and, and Aaron Mendes. And I said, oh, okay, thank God. Because <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't know what the heck I'd be talking about. So, but yeah, so I, I might be like, yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want to say who we play? Yeah, yeah. let's. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm Lauren Lynn and I play Sakuya. Yay! And I'm Bryce Pappenbrook. I am Kitty Toe. Uh, I think for the rest of the panel, I should just do uh, War of the Underworld Kitty Toe. Which is literally just this. Or what else did I do? Um, I, I was Annie Landhart in Attack on Titan, uh, Sailor Neptune in the Viz Media dub of Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal. Uh, what other show? Oh, that's right, Merlin from Seven Deadly Sins. So it's really funny. I use Bryce as as a member because <laughs> I've been in so many shows with him. I'm like, what other? Oh, that's right. Okay, Sins. When have we been talking to each other? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and uh, a lot of other stuff that I can't talk about yet. I'm so sad because it's it's 
Y'all, it's crazy, and I'm super stoked about it. So, Bryce, what other stuff have you done? Well, I'll start with the shows that we talk to each other. Yes. Um, Aaron Yeager in a tag on site. Yeah. Not yelling. I'm trying. I'm trying. All my characters speak in screaming, so um, I'm, I'm Meliodas and Zeldris in the Seven Deadly Sins. Um, Zeldris is sexy. <laughs> I know. I love his red jumpsuit. I know. It's so good. And that deep V. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm Rito Kumara, uh, the Exorcist, and uh, recently Inosuke in Demon Slayer. Fairy tale. Thank you. Uh, Sailor Venus in the Viz dub of Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal. Uh, I voice Makoto in Persona 5. Uh, Sarda in Boruto. Uh, A2 in Near Automata or Automata, however you want to say it. Uh, Auto Tomato? That's what I'm saying. Um, uh, and Beach in uh, Borderlands 2. Those are some of the ones that I can remember. I also voice uh, Retsuko in a Gretzko. I forgot everything. Deanna in Seven Deadly Sins. Hey! Uh, Ryuko in Kill a Kill. Uh, Bernadetta in Fire Emblem 3 Hostage. Oh, yeah! Fire Emblem 3! Yeah, it's Rhea! She's Rhea! Yeah. She's Rhea. Yeah. She's Rhea. Yeah. She's Rhea. <laughs> I just got announced as Reina in Magia Records. Yay! Yeah. Magical girl world. That's so fun. I was getting one day. Yeah. One day I'll join. Wait, Erica, you forgot one. I forget all of them. My wife who? Well, I was only naming a few. I mean, see where you're in as young. Thank you. Okay. We're good now. And Wikipedia knows better than us, so if we mess something up, just check there. Right? It's Happening. So the same thing that whenever there's a metallic sharpie when we're doing a signing, if I'm sitting next to Bryce, my metallic sharpies start working, stop working, and his work all the time. Notice my microphone is starting to droop to be like. <laughs> <laughs> and you had a fantastic flight, and mine was rough. Whenever you have a, a yeah. bad flight, mine is the Bryce easiest and I ever. Are uh, oh, like yes. inverse, inversely connected <laughs> yeah. in the universe. Yeah. If I have a terrible trip. To get to a convention, his is so smooth. It always balances out. If I am it, it, it always evens to like. Bryce will be stuck in another airport for 27 days. Yep. That's like the equivalent. We can never both have a good day. But we made it! We made Yay! It! And the, the end of my night last night was my daughter. My family's here with me this weekend. Uh, it was about 3 a.m. Uh, my my daughter was watching a cartoon where they were doing a haka dance from New Zealand. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Where they're like, hum, hum, like they're yelling. So she was on my bed doing the haka at 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. So good time. Yeah, that's great. That's horrible. Yes, question. I have a question. Yeah. When you all are doing the, the, the uh, voiceovers, like specifically like Kirito and Asuna, or, you know, when everyone's together in the scene, are you all together in the room, or are those all done like individually? We are never together. Yeah, whenever you're dubbing, it's very difficult to be together as a group because you're actually looking at the screen and you're talking as your characters are talking, and you try to make it not look like Godzilla. Um, so it's, it's already difficult enough by yourself to hit sync, but if you had to do that as a group, it would be really, really tough. Right. And oh. time consuming and, and expensive. Well, and our schedules are so weird. There's, like, we love when we get to do group records, but that usually happens for prelay, which is, like, the traditional Western animation where we go in and record first, and then they'll animate it after the fact. And it's so fun to do a group record, but um, it's so difficult to schedule all the actors at the same time. And uh, also, we are not the best at staying focused. We'll laugh at the other actor. We will like joke around. This is why at conventions everyone says, "Why do you guys just talk to each other like you don't see each other?" Because this is don't. the only time we see each other. I um, say Walla, Walla sessions, though. Walla sessions are awful because we just won't stop. We won't shut up. Mm -hmm. We'll just talk to each other throughout the entire. And that's when that's when the director and engineer get really mad at us. So. I don't know if you guys have heard any commentaries that sometimes go along with the dubs, 
we'll do commentaries, and usually it's just us going off on a weird tangent. Brady and I did a commentary for Railgun where uh, we talked about birds. I don't know why. I don't know how we got on the topic, but it was just Brina and I haven't seen each other in a very long time, and there was a bird in like the first 30 seconds of the anime, and then we just talked about the birds. <laughs> so, very strange. Uh, what, what we can do, though, when we're not working together is leave little treats for the other actors, oh, yeah. uh, which we call bombs. Yeah. Um, and you're the you just, of those. I, I love leaving bloopers and, and funny things to, to just surprise people down the line. Um, there might be some out there now that I don't know if someone saw. I might have left something for you. I don't know if you saw it. Is it Hopefully you will. In something I can't talk about yet, but... Uh, Hopefully you'll see it at some point. Erica It'll be is worth the your time. hardest person to make crap. Like, I feel like if a bomb is left for you, you would just go, okay. Oh, and like, just say your line as if nothing happened. I think it depends on how tired she is. <laughs> it takes a while to process things, so I won't realize until halfway through. Oh. Uh, like, what was that? <laughs> oh, you'll process this one really fast. All mine are fart jokes, by the way. <laughs> so there's some coming for you. I will say, it is sword art. I oh, got one of the sweetest, uh, Some one of the actors left like the sweetest thing for me. It was not for sword art, but the actor, uh, the first time I worked with her was on sword art. It's the actress who plays Rinko in sword art, and Jen and I are working on another project together, and I walked into the studio, and there was like a little green index card, and it said, hi, Jeremy, I'm so happy to be working with you. You are so great. Believe in yourself. You're going to do an amazing job. I love you, Jen. And I was like, and it sat the whole session. And there were a couple times where I was like, this is not working. And I would look at that. I was like, believe in yourself, Jen. Believe in yourself. And I was like, thank you, Jen. Like, it was so nice. So I was like, we should all just leave, like, index card notes for each other. But then sometimes we would not leave nice things. We'd be like, you're the worst. Have a great day. Bye. You smell. Someone told, wrote a note to just whoever was coming in next to have a nice day, and I happened to be the one next, and I just wrote no. <laughs> I think that was me. No, it was, I think it was Chris Hackett. Oh, was it? Okay. Because yeah. oh, I've written that before, and then I've seen Mendez's responses to that, and that's I probably done very hard. You're like, I will not. I won't. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, I have candy for you. Yeah. <laughs> candy? Uh, we'll go right here. Okay. Do you want to throw it? Oh, God. Oh, You're all good. Love the cosplay. Yeah, you Looks awesome. <laughs> 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 so, um, what's your question on the resume? Yeah. Um, when you look at character rights uh, that can fight as people like in Nosuke, Aaron, Shad, Noir, and all of those in my career, uh, do, you <laughs> use, do you use what, like, your martial arts knowledge or kind of like think about ways to teach it when you're watching it? Like, uh, forgive me, I didn't know nothing about it. Like, oh, an arm bar of destruction does not bang out. Uh, you just, like, twist it to the side. I've never heard that question. Yeah, that is a great question. And uh, absolutely, I bring uh, my martial arts training into the booth with me. Um, like, I know what it feels like to throw a punch and to be kicked in the face and kicked in the stomach. So, like, I imagine that when I'm in those scenes. And I've definitely left some of those battles with those characters, like, exhausted. Um, there's moments where I almost trick myself to feel like I'm in, like you want to live in that moment as much as you can. So like, I'll come out of the fight scene and my heart will be beating like I was just in the fight also. Um, so I, I think that just helps me get into the moment. Um, as far as like thinking, oh, could I have taken this person or beat them? Uh, I haven't really thought about that, but I'll start looking for character weaknesses. Um, <laughs> Because I always get like, who would win in a fight? And my answer is, I play so many overpowered characters, I don't know. Um, so yeah. Uh, and you had another question. Oh yeah, sorry. Have you guys seen the SAO Bridge series by somebody with SAO Bridge? Yeah, I have not. No. It's it's worth your time. Um, the the something. I, I think there are. I haven't seen all of it. Um, the, the Something Witty group are, uh, they're really great. Very nice people. Um, I've become kind of friends with them. Um, uh, we actually watched one of the episodes live. Yeah. And it was really great. Uh, and they were they were with us watching it at the same time. So. I misunderstood one of the jokes. Like, I heard it. What did I, did, what did I hear? I was like, 
It wasn't Samuel L. Jackson. I heard, I heard something and I go, oh, that was great. And they're like, that's not what the joke was, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. It, it was nowhere close to what was said on screen. and it was totally misheard it. It was just as good as what they said. Yeah, yeah. so now there's two jokes for that one. Kind of a comment on your first question. I, I've known Bryce for a while now. I don't know exactly how long, Bryce, but it's... it's Check, throw it. Don't toss, don't like chuck it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not underhanded. Okay. This is gonna be, it's not gonna be close. I'm so nervous. Close oh, enough! It was an okay toss. I am so I kind of um, love it. It still, it still baffles me to this day that like Bryce is one of the sweetest guys you will ever meet in the industry, and yet he could like snap people like a twig. <laughs> <laughs> Such a nice guy as I'm pelting people with. It's, it's, it's I, you know, it's it's pretty, it's it's weird, but it's awesome at the same time. <laughs> you know? One of the like, first times I was in DC, I threw Laffy Taffy in a panel. Did and you hit someone? I, square between the eyes. <laughs> uh, so I don't throw any anymore. In my defense, I was throwing it to someone else, and he stood up. <laughs> so it's his fault. I felt really bad. He was like, you hit me. And I was like, with candy. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, you guys want to take another? Uh, yeah, sure. Do we have Somewhere. any other questions? Uh, I see red sleeve. Red sleeve. Oh, sweet. Oh, it's okay. perfect. So I'm not wearing my glasses. So. Oh, it's all right. Um, I have two questions. The first one is for Bryce. I saw that you finished the Demon Slayer recording on Twitter, and out of all of the names that Inosuke has come up with, which is your favorite? Oh my gosh, so many good moments. Um, I, I, I love a good laugh, um, and there are some really good laughing moments for Inosuke, who's never seen any Demon Slayer. Okay, I'll warn you before you watch it, because I think you should watch it. If you start, you'll binge the whole series. It is really good. Um, so, my character, for you guys who don't know, um, he was raised by boars. He has like this boar head on. And as many of my characters do, he has two swords. Um, and, I, and he screams a lot. And he screams a lot, yeah, typecast. Um, so, so. He's actually very different than other characters I've played because uh, it's... He's raised by boards. He's raised by boards, yes. Um, and, and I get to explore the deeper range of my voice. And uh, normally I play like young heroes because my voice hasn't changed since middle school. <laughs> and, and, and Magical Girls is my hope. Um, so so I, I don't usually have like a vocal warm up, but I do for Inosuke. So, um, as I'm sitting in traffic to get to the studio, I have to laugh like this. Like, this is my warm-up laugh for him. I go... <laughs> and then the people pull up next to me and they're like... What is going on? It's a good time. So, so all the laughing is really fun. And then also, to get myself into the character, I have to drink really dark coffee, like the blackest coffee the studio has. The kind where, where like, you take a sip and it just, well, it like makes you angry. You're like, like, who would ever make this? So you like take a sip and you're like, you make this face, ugh. <laughs> so, so every day I take a sip and I kind of like amp myself up. I like, <laughs> Oh, so good. He can't get any names right. I love it. I love it. Just sound like very complicated names, so I don't know if I would get it. Yeah. 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 Um, thank you. Uh, I'm not going to throw this at you. I'm really nervous. Come up if you want a piece of candy. He doesn't want to hit people. Uh, Mendez, you choose someone. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Okay. I know. <laughs> this is what happens on Sword Art Online family, guys. I, I was sorry. I'll, I'll just we'll, we'll take it away and then we'll come right back. So uh, I, I was.
was telling Jeremy during Mother's Rosario, like the show just does not focus on key detail, but he just appears at random points and does something really cool like, don't forget the show's about me. <laughs> so, so I'm really hoping that by the, the next arc of War of Underworld, he, yeah. Don't even worry. Yeah. <laughs> he does more than just, <sighs> <laughs> You've got to remind everybody that you're sensitive. Yes. I have a hard time choosing favorites yeah, because have two swords. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, especially between all the dual wielders. Um, I, I feel like you become attached to all the characters you play, and they live somewhere inside my head, and they're all angry, and I don't want them to yell at each other. So, I mean, it depends. Yeah. It depends. And I feel like not being chosen would provoke. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to provoke any of them. There's too many crazy folks from there. <laughs> so I have a question. I know you voice Miami and now you tell like the Dong and Rumpa series. I do. Have you played the games? So there's a few games that I've worked on that I'm like afraid to play because I'm very much a completionist when it comes to those kind of games. So Dong and Rumpa is one of them. Everything Fire Emblem is another one. Like, I don't want to touch those. Because um, I'm so scared, I'll just never do anything else. Um, and I, I literally have, so I play Zidane, or Zidane, everyone calls him a different name, uh, uh, from Final Fantasy IX, and I have Final Fantasy IX waiting for me to play, and I'm nervous to start it, because I feel like I'll just dive into that game forever. Um, so no, I have not played the Danganronpa games, but they're awesome. If you were to play the game, and you died in the game, would you die in real life? <laughs> <laughs> and we bring it back to Sword Art Online! Good work, Jeremy! Thank you. Teamwork on that one. <laughs> and if you'd like some candy, yeah, yeah. you can come up and help yourself. I love your cosplay. Thank you. That's perfect. Jeremy, you pick someone. Um, we haven't gotten on the site. Yes. Yes. What are you going to say about these I mean, sure. Look how cute I love her dress. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. That's so cute. Thanks so much. Thank you. Oh, this is so sweet. Thank you. And they're personal. Oh, this is so nice. Thank you so much. How sweet is it? Did you have a candy? Appreciate it. Do you want some candy? Oh, no, good. Okay. Wait, but I picked some. Can I have some Uh, Your turn. Well, then we can go back. Oh, right here. I should pick back. Too late. Yeah. Back. I have two questions for um, Bryce. Okay. Okay. I know that you did also um, Eric from Attack on Titan. It means a lot. Is that your voice? <laughs> there are certain kinds of screams that you just can't protect your voice. Um, so yeah, there are definitely moments during the recording of Attack on Titan that were pretty rough. Uh, but I didn't actually lose my voice until Attack on Titan Junior High, which which we dubbed uh, Attack on Titan Muppet Babies. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the subject line, whenever we would get an email about it, it would say, uh, you know, uh, Junior High Muppet Babies or Titan Baby. Titan Baby. Titan, Titan, Titan Babies. Babies. Yeah. yeah. So it was like the comedy spinoff of Attack on Titan. Right. So. For Titan, like, everything is so brutal and raw, and to do comedy around that, like, you just have to take everything to the next yeah, level, yeah. and it's already massive. So there's moments where I'm screaming, and uh, <laughs> my voice, like, like this one moment where he's holding this boulder above his head, um, I was just yelling so loud, my voice was just like, ah! and just, like, went out. Like, it just stopped. <laughs> And Mike McFarland, who was the director of Attack on Titan, who's here this weekend also, he was like, and you're done. <laughs> and that was it. So, yeah, there's there's moments where you just can't protect your voice. Also voice Cat Nier from Lazy I do voice Cat Noir. Hi, Cat Noir. <laughs> um, I have not sported the full, well, if you guys want to know what Cat Noir looks like, Cat Noir, could you stand up for us? I mean, come on, guys. Who thinks Bryce should Look, I'm not, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pressure Bryce because then I am, oh, look at that. Because then Bryce can pressure us. Yes, exactly. And I don't want that in my life. Let me, let me pick the most risque characters no. that you guys voice. Yeah, I mean, we all know it's Merlin, so. 
You don't want to voice your character from Kill a Kill? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, cosplay your character. You have, really? Not like in the, the, like, the revealing stuff, but yeah. he wears like this uh, track jacket at the end of the series. Oh, okay. At the of the series, too. And uh, he was genius, and I did that one too. See, yeah, exactly. I'm all about, I'm I'm all do about that. the pants and the layers and like long skirts, but some of the things, obviously, that we've seen in anime, I'm like, that is A, not practical for fighting. It's just not practical for going to the grocery store. Like, I'm not gonna wear that. Who, who knows what we're referring to with that character? So like, as she gets stronger, her costume less gets clothes. less clothes. So right as that show came out, um, I, I went to Anime Expo that year, and that was a very, like, there was tons of Kill a Kill cosplay that year. And one of the first cosplay I saw as I walked in was a very, Big gentleman uh, with a full beard, cosplaying the most revealing costume from that show, and it was. Be sure to text me a picture of it. <laughs> yes, I did. That's yes, awesome. I did. It was beautiful. It was great though. Like anyone that is, you know, willing to rock that outfit, like power to it. Heck yeah. I I met uh, a group of gentlemen um, that were dressed as the Sailor Scots. And they wore kilts, and they had vests, and they made a point during uh, Dragon Con to come find me so I could take a picture with them. And Amanda Miller took an inopportune bathroom break, and she missed her opportunity. Oh, but I'll share you. I'll share the picture with you guys. They look so great, and apparently they travel all the time. But uh, if you have a chance to meet the Sailor Scots, don't miss it. I, I don't know how people make it work, but I have seen a lot more Merlin cosplay recently. Don't know how they make it work. They do, and it looks amazing, and it's like more power to you, you know? Uh, because for a while, I don't think anybody knew exactly how they would pull the outfit yeah, that's, together. That's, so, that's, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mechanics. Yeah. Mr. Richard, give something. Keep going this way. Okay. Yes. Denim jacket. How are you? Good to see you. Hey. Yeah. Um, so, question for Sherry and Erica. Okay. Can you talk about your uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses voiceover uh, experience with that uh, game? Oh, yeah. That was a. Uh, I love the game in general, so I like have really strong feelings for the game. Um, Black um, Eagles. Yeah, Black Eagles. Um, I I thought that experience was really cool because it was a little bit different than I don't know if you had the same. Experience. Um, with your character, but uh, it was a little bit different as far as video games go, because usually like we're in a booth alone, just talking to ourselves like we would like with an anime or any or other JRPG, but um, they had set it up to where if somebody had done their part of the, converse, the support conversations before you, they would play those lines in between yours and you would be able to react on Well, that's them. awesome. Yeah. And it was really nice because like, you get to like hear and actually naturally react off something as opposed to guessing or have the director tell you like the way that it might work. Yeah, so, except for Violet though. Yeah, well Violet, yeah, Violet doesn't talk so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I thought that was really cool. It was probably one of my favorite video game experiences because of that. I, uh, I love the game and I love getting to play Rhea. It's not my normal kind of role to play. And I remember the first session I went in and I thought I needed to, like, try and, like, because, well, Rhea is a walking spoiler. Uh, so it's very difficult to talk about her. But there's a lot of gravitas and a lot of history, and so there's a lot of pressure to make sure that that is all present. And I remember um, uh, Patrick, the director, just saying, just, like, you don't need to try. You just are that powerful and that strong. And I was like, I am not. I need to try. He was like, no, you are. And I was like, what? He was like, think about being Dumbledore. And I was like, Dumbledore's really powerful. Like I, as Jeremy, do not have the gravitas of Dumbledore. So it was a very um, interesting confidence building uh, experience for people to keep saying, do less. You don't need to try as much. And so it was interesting to take that into my life of how much do I, as Sherry, feel like I need to try to be something or to, to be, uh, I guess, a force or whatever. 
And so for that one, they were just like, try less, just don't. Now, obviously, there are some moments and things that are revealed that if you've played the game, you know, and it's been very difficult that I cannot say I am this thing, because uh, that's really cool to be this thing, but I will never be able to say that because I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but then getting to do that was like way cool. And I, that was another one where I was like, you guys have to fix this to make me sound like this thing, because I just I can't. I mean, the game's like really long. I'm already like in my second playthrough. I'm glad you love it. It's it's very fun, and it's also been really cool how many people uh, have messaged me on Twitter and they're like, "This is not you." And I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it I, is though. But I could. I immediately, as soon as before writing this book, I, I knew that was going to be you. Uh, how long did it take you to do the, to get your character in the Instagram Fire Emblem Three Houses filter? Uh, like two or three. Times. Okay, it took me like twenty. Uh, it was very so when I finally got it. But you guys didn't see any of the attempts. I didn't show the failed attempts because I felt like it would hurt the other voice actors' feelings when I got their character and went no, because uh, I love all the characters. They're just not me. And I didn't want to get texts from people being like, that was really disrespectful. So I just didn't share it. So then when I got myself and I shared it, I looked like a two-year-old, like, behaving. I was like, yes, this is awesome. And it was, oh, you did? Great. Okay, I was embarrassed by myself. <laughs> but that's standard. Oh, do you want some candy? Oh, uh, sure. I'm not going to throw it at you. I can't. I have PTSD from injuring that human. <laughs> Um, right here. I love your cosplay. That is awesome. Um, question. So, anybody from Twitter? So, has voicing Alice and Deja been any different from the past seasons? Or is there anything um, that's been your favorite? And, Sharon, how do you feel about the new harem additions to keep the terror? Girl, the new harem additions? <laughs> so, here's the thing. Um, everyone's like, do you do, do you think Asuna feels threatened? And that's one of the things that I like about Kirito and Asuna's relationship is they know how much they mean to each other. And I love that Asuna is, uh, like, she just loves having these girls around that are her friends. And um, <laughs> they can talk about, and talk if she's frustrated with something Kirito's doing, they're like, girl, we get it. <laughs> Like, she doesn't have to give them the full story, they just know. Uh, and uh, why would you ever be offended or threatened by being surrounded by super strong, amazing women? Like, it's just like more powerful women in a show. So, I think that's great. Bryce, do you feel threatened? <laughs> Anytime I'm on a panel and someone's like, who's your favorite girl? I feel threatened by all the other girls. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, this second half of Alicization is very different for me, uh, without spoiling anything, just because I don't talk as much. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's, there's been uh, moments where I record for Sword Art, and then I go to record for Demon Slayer immediately after. Like, I have to record Sword Art before Demon Slayer. Um, and I, I took a page out of your book. Um, I recorded most of my lines for Kirito this season sitting down, and I never sit down in the booth. I have to like be up and moving, but um, I recorded a lot of these sitting down. Um, and it's actually challenging doing something sitting down sure. like that. Um, so yeah, it's been a little different. Uh, where can we go over here? Aurora. Oh, uh, where we could get trapped in the game? Absolutely not. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good segue. So if, if, later on this weekend, um, we're doing a live uh, reading um, for, uh, it's called Hidden Frequencies. Uh, Mick Wingard, who's another voice actor, um, wanted to do like old school radio dramas. And so we're gonna be doing a live radio drama with select sound effects so you can watch that. But you will see what it would be like if there was something that we were trapped in. But would I ever play a game where there is a possibility that I could die or someone else could die? Hard pass. 
like hard ones. I die so fast. <laughs> I just be terrible. Yeah, I'd like... You have a wife and children. Yes. And puppies. <laughs> yeah. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> so I'd probably die pretty fast too. <laughs> Then should we go back this way again? Yes. No, right here. Yes. Yes. Titan, um, there's this moment where this giant hole goes through Aaron's shoulder, like, here, and instead of, like, pulling it out this way, he, like, goes through it, and he lets out this big, giant scream, as he does. Um, so, it was right around lunch, and I was with Mike in Texas, and it was one of the first times that I was, like, out there, so Mike was taking me on this, like, food tour, yes. Um, so there's a spot called Muya Burger. Do you guys have Muya Burgers here? No. Okay. It might not even exist anymore, but when it did, um, so uh, we went there. They had sweet potato fries on the menu. I love sweet potato fries, and uh, oh yeah, they're they're really tasty. And things are bigger in Texas. This is truth. Um, so I ordered my burger, and then I ordered the large sweet potato fries to split with Mike, which was a tray and a mountain of sweet potato fries. And I. Where they give you oh, the yeah. order and then pour another. It's like that. Loaded up, and and I ate all of the burger and all of the sweet potato fries oh. with Mike. So I get back to the booth and I'm just like, oh, sweet potato fries, so full. And that scream was the first thing up. And and this is what it sounded like. So we get three beeps. You go, it goes beep, 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 and then you say the line. So it sounded like this, beep, beep, beep. So I look over and Mike is dying of laughter. <laughs> him and the engineer are just busting up. He, he has to hit the button for us to hear him and he just goes, yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> I couldn't physically get enough oxygen in my body to scream like Aaron Yeager. Just <laughs> giant sweet potato fry mountain in my stomach. It doesn't have any injury, but it, it was still funny. Character is very like frenetic and like screams a lot because she just has really bad social anxiety, which I mean relatable. Yeah. Um, so this is really dipping, isn't it? I know. It's just <laughs> it's, right? it's, it's both. So like whenever she like has conversations with people, she usually ends up either screaming at the beginning of it or screaming at the end of it or screaming at both tail ends of it. So um, I to get that like nervous energy. Um, to like the extreme, I would like totally, I would ball my fist up and just like tense my entire body. And so after four hours of that, uh, it usually takes a little bit for me to like actually start feeling my muscles get sore after a session, so maybe a few hours, but like my back was messed up for the next two days because I had tensed up my body so much. Patrick actually got me bath bombs. Oh. 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 You need to relax at the They do. <laughs> I mean, I've definitely injured my voice. There was a, a, a project that I'm working on that I can't talk about, and it had a lot of heavy-duty reactions. Um, and um, one of my favorite days, we always recorded this project on Fridays, and a bunch of actors that worked on it, we would all know when uh, each other had the sessions, because I think out of all the sessions, probably like, maybe a fifth of the time, I shredded my voice right after. And one of the days was so much fun. Um, we had to be uh, choking on blood. And, and they don't want, they don't want uh, it to sound like you're drowning. So we would drink water 
and then do the reactions like with the water and so we're just spitting everywhere and there was that's one of the few times there was another actor in the booth with us so we were filming each other because we felt really cool and then we realized like we can't post this we are literally spitting all over the place this is disgusting but we felt very empowered um by the end of the day we're leaving going that was so much fun. And we just sounded terrible. Um, and the same situation, because we had to do different reactions of where we got hit, I, my whole body hurt because you like tense the muscles and, um, and if you think that you have to go work out to fatigue your muscles, that is wrong. It's just like a constant like isometric hold for too long that your body will feel like you've burned so much and you will feel so sore. And so I felt really sore and I had no voice. So I just hung out my cats for like two days till I felt better. I, uh, I have a similar story with Jeremy's. Uh, I, so I, I played Annie Leonhardt in Attack on Titan, which also means that I voiced the female Titan. Spoiler alert, it's been out for like four years. Catch up. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so I also voiced the female Titan whenever she uh, screamed or made grunts and punched Aaron, you know, all that. Um, and there's a, there's a particular scene, it's right after she's introduced and she is in the middle of the forest and there's just a scene where she just throws her head back and she gives out three very loud screams in a row. And uh, my McFarlane, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't want, you know, he wants the, he wants it to be the real thing. You know, he doesn't want it to be half-assed, none of that. Uh, pardon my language, sorry. Uh, but, uh, you know, so he wanted the Titan screams for both female Titan and, uh, and Aaron Titan to be just guttural and not clean and, and messy and just animalistic. So, yes, exactly, gross. As disgusting as yeah. possible. Yeah, so, so it was nothing, it really could not sound clean, so it had to literally come from the back of the throat against the vocal cords, which is really not good for your vocal cords. But, uh, you know, we had to do the job, so I ended up doing it three times in a row. And I just remember the first take, I was just, my voice wasn't shot yet, but again, Mike McFarlane, you know, he comes from the Dragon Ball Z era, so he's like, that's awesome, do it again. <laughs> I was like, okay. So then I do it again, and then one more time. We saved it till the end, but by the end of it, I could barely talk because it was very, it was, it was a pretty rough session, and then the big battle between the two Titans was pretty, that was a lot of fun though, especially when they put the filter on our voices, so I thought that was fun. Um, but yeah, so that was that was not easy to do to scream as the people. Also, think. unpopular thing to say, but I feel like because I've read a lot of articles of voice actors saying it, I need to like reiterate. Every time we do some of those screams where it hurts and it sounds bad and it shreds our voice, yes, there is an element of like I want it to sound cool and it's fearless. But in the back of your head, there's always a Am I going to push it too far? Is this going to be the last time I do this? It is actually incredibly dangerous. And so if you go, oh my gosh, I want to be a voice actor. I want to go practice this at home. Please be taking acting classes. Please be taking vocal classes and learn about vocal health. Because if you do any of these like guttural screams that you see, you can ruin your voice forever. There have been actors that have done this in games and they cannot speak again. Like their voice will never be the same. So it is an unpopular thing to say, but I feel like we have a responsibility to say because we're like, oh my God, it's so cool and it's so empowering and it sounds really great. But it honestly, at any point in time that we do it, it could be the last time we ever do that and we could be out of a job. So like, just please, I cannot stress the importance of acting and vocal health. Uh, yeah. We're about 10 minutes. Okay. Cool. Uh, your turn. Just know, uh, I say take as many classes that you can for like cheap or community college or practicing scenes with your friends because things can get really expensive. And I want you to make sure that you 
seriously love, love, love it before you start investing money because I don't want anybody investing a ton of money then going, this is not for me. Uh, I know a lot of people go, oh, it's, I love anime, I just want to get in the booth. Um, just know, it, if you don't like being in front of people, that is, even for a voice actor, especially now, that is not the way the job works anymore. More and more with the internet, it, it is your responsibility and your privilege to be able to market the show, and often that means on camera at conventions, you're going to have to be interacting with people. Um, I think you should take uh, film classes so you can see what you look like on camera, see what your strengths are in that way. I think you should take theater classes so you know what it's like to improvise. I think you should take improv, so if you have to ad lib or you're coming up with different ways to help pad the line to make it fit, you can help the director in that way and help the writer because their brains are fried after having to do this for days and days and days um, so yeah class 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 and more class uh, also if you don't like water uh, get over it <laughs> drink so much water what share we said <laughs> you know yeah don't let uh because it, it, it has become a very large industry for like promotion and stuff like that so I even if you are too afraid to like be in front of people yeah. like I wouldn't let you know obviously what share me said no, and I'm sure she wouldn't like want to yeah. be afraid of that either I used to be, I'm still pretty shy as a person, but I used to be way worse than I was. Like the type of uh, social uh, anxiety stage fright to where I had to do an eighth grade presentation and was like in line to do it and was shaking so bad and stumbled my way through it and then went to the bathroom and cried afterwards. Like yeah. I just hated talking in front of people. And now I'm you know, here, to talk, I talk in front of people like at least once, twice a month, you know, yeah, I, about these things. I am somebody who is deathly scared of people. Same thing, I hated giving presentations. I found I don't like talking as me. I don't like the sound of my voice. When I listen to a character, I don't have a problem with it, but when I hear playback of just me commenting, it grates me. If I have to watch a panel, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. I but when I'm, when I'm an actor, I'm playing a character. And so I would say like if you're feeling really terrified and you're very shy, I think taking acting classes is a great thing because you can kind of step into a different version of you and find a different character that feels comfortable talking in front of people and you're practicing with someone else's words and someone else's, uh, like, I guess, ideas of what a character is. And then when you realize, when you step off the stage or step out of the booth, you realize that was you all along and you find a lot of strength in yourself that you didn't realize, which is really great. Mendez, it's your oh, turn. Oh gosh, uh, in the front. Candy, candy. Uh, do you all know how to do like five screens, like metal screens? No. It helps a lot with like the screen and stuff. But I listen, I think the Japanese um, voice actors, a lot of them know how to do that stuff. So that's how they get the really like guttural sounding screens without damaging your voice. But it's like, because I, uh, I'm in a metal band, so I like, I'm the vocalist. And so you, you watch the art of screaming? Yeah. Or is it is it is that what it's called? It's, yeah, there's that, and then there's just there's like a lot of lessons and stuff like that. And I've taken yeah. vocal lessons with opera singers when I was in college. Um, about yeah. Kind of stuff. Um, so there's healthy ways to learn that. Yeah, stuff. sure. And then you can do it for long periods of time. So like, I know it's your voice and everything, but if you were to you know learn how to do that sort of thing, it definitely help with those scenes. Yeah. So Mike McFarland, uh, I'm mentioning him again, um, he listens to a lot of metal music and for season one of Titan I stayed with him and drove into the studio every day. So it was like 30 minutes of like and then eight hours of as Aaron Yeager. So yeah, I, I really uh, love when metal guys do that kind of high-pitched scream and uh, yeah on my bucket list to kind of learn how to do that better um, I feel like I, I've practiced a little bit and it helps me get to some deeper stuff after I do that it's super interesting to explore it's definitely an art it's definitely an art when people are able to do that and it's a it's an it's an not it's an underappreciated art I think uh, it's definitely not easy to do it is it's dangerous to do it in part yeah, there's you're doing it on the boards, it's, it's exactly. all mobile holes. Yeah, there's one project, I, the, actually the project I was working on where we would all get uh, shredded, and the director would tell us, 
we were all like cheating it and we would like go, well, this is gonna sound gross and it's gonna sound grimy, but it's not gonna hurt. And he's like, I can tell you're doing like a metal thing. It's got, I gotta, I gotta hear the pain. And so like for this project, they specifically, if we did anything that would protect it, they'd be like, it's too safe, try it again. Uh, so there are certain projects where the, the team is like, I need, to, I need to feel it like, I feel like when you guys are exposed to this project, you'll be able to tell. Yeah. Uh, we, we've heard a couple things where we're like, oh, it sounds so cool. And then you think back and you go, oh, everything in my body hurts. Because yeah. you think back to like, but he would, he would tell us, he's like, uh, a lot of the guys would be like, we're just going to do a metal scream. He's like, anybody, anybody when, they, when they experience this, is gonna say, ah, they're just doing a metal scream and I don't want them to experience them. I want the, I want even the most hardcore person to experience this and go, ooh, that hurts. And he was like, and because of that, you gotta hurt. So it was like, that sucks. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> and for Kill a Kill, I'm sure that was pretty tough too. Yeah, you had to do a lot of screams. Yeah, I was new because then I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I was like, oh God, no time to learn either. Like it was, it was on the fly. Yeah. Do we, do we all, are we all signing at the same time after this? Yeah, what yeah. else is everyone are you, doing? Are you, are you, do you have this? Yeah, so Enjoy. we're going to uh, be signing by the giant windows. Uh, <laughs> the floor, you go to the right and keep walking. You'll see everything. Left, left, left. yes. Left. Yes, that is my other left. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all signing at three. Yes, but yes. If, you, if you have any other questions, please come hang out with us. If you want some candy. <laughs> and do not bump rush the stage. Uh, <laughs> and and like, does anyone have any other programming uh, today? That's a good question. Um, I, I have a panel tonight at 7.30. Um, it's really, really fun. It's my efforts and reactions yeah. panel. Um, so please come. It's in here. It, it's in here. Um, You're moving in here. I have bloopers. Uh, yes. <laughs> some from Soda, yes. Are you going to play um, one of your favorite ones? Oh, there's some good stuff yeah. in there. Um, so yeah, I hope to see you guys there. It's a really, it's one of my favorite panels that I get to do. Um, probably. So in the middle of that. So is it during, you guys can come in in the middle of it also. If you're at something with the VIP mixer or something like that, just crash whenever. Like, come hang out, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, this is the only panel I have today. After this, I just have autographs and then the VIP. Same. So be, please come see us. I'll be on the Hidden Frequencies panel tomorrow. Yeah. Is that fun? Yeah, yeah, that is tomorrow. Yes, so that is tomorrow. please come in. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. Tomorrow at 7. Yeah. In this room. In, in this room. We're moving in, guys. Thank you guys so much Thank for coming.